Hello and good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. I hope you woke up feeling good. And in case you didn't, I'm pretty certain this show is going to lift your spirits because we're doing... Why, why are you saying <laughs> this is going to lift your spirits? Yeah, it's going to lift... Yeah, you better. <laughs> yeah, it will. Yeah. Definitely. No, because we're talking sp spoken word and that yeah. kind of thing like just speaks to the spirit, to the yes. soul and makes you dig deep. Exactly. Okay, so let me just introduce my guests. Okay, ladies and gents. Um, I have got Desmond Ogubi, a spoken word artist, and Spontaneous, who we've had on the show before. So welcome back, Spontaneous. Thank you so much for having me back. Yeah? yeah. So tell Desmond, yes. let's talk about why you did a... I <laughs> don't think you're going to lift people's spirits. No, what uh, is so sometimes, you know, spoken word puts you in that uh, meditation moment where you think about all your pain and how to bypass them and sometimes it's not as happy as people will want it to sound yeah that's why when you say that i got into that space oh of like pain yeah, and of like, like having yeah. to just <laughs> dig into that exactly deep. Yeah. so you're gonna give us one of those deep moments should we yes. start with that uh, yes okay yes. let's actually so in yes. fact that's what we're gonna do we're gonna have a yeah. piece by Desmond and we'll see where it's gonna take us if it takes us <laughs> the other side I'm sorry but I hope you dig deep into your pain too uh, when you come out of it we apologize yeah but, but you're if, gonna do this but actually it's gonna make you feel good That's it's gonna make such, you feel such something. an ambush man yeah. such an ambush no but no no yes, it's, but I, I trust you you're gonna be great so here is a piece by Desmond yes okay you see the the, the sixth time that God sucker punched my parents they put bruise on the on the wound and called it Desmond. You see, when when you're born during an argument, you spend the rest of your life feeling like an interruption. Your name becomes a sweater that you borrowed without asking. You say it like the real owner is on his way to take it back. To this day, I still stutter when I say my name. You see, my my mother is called Dorothy. She smiles the way envelopes do when they swallow good news. One day, I want to marry a woman like her. You see, I, I ask God for, for black, but I take her in whatever form she comes in. So Desmond, tell me a little bit about that piece you've just performed. Ah, so it's about me just writing the story of when I was born, my kind of family I grew up in, and why that family made me who I am right now. Because I feel most of us really never talk about our stories enough times for people to really know who we are. We kind of blanket it with a lot of other things apart from what we really are. So I, I feel like most of the time when you speak from the angle of I know who I am and I'm sharing it out with you so that you guys can buy into my story, you'll, be, you'll kind of understand me better. See, that's an uplifting thing. Yeah. I'd say it's going to make you think and make you be like, who am I? Do you know who you are? Yes, I do know oh, who wow. I am. Wow. Do you know who you are spontaneously? I am walking along it. Yeah. Do I really know who I am? Yeah. Who I'm walking towards that truth. Yeah, no, I'd say I'm, I, I'm on that same boat I too. Know. I'm, like I'm on that journey to figuring out who really am I. Exactly. So, so who are you, Desmond? And we can start. I was start about to ask oh, the same thing. Okay. Okay. Like, okay. We, and we can start. We can start with just like a little. Tell me a little bit about your childhood, and then and then later you can dive a little bit deeper and give me a more <laughs> holistic, spiritual answer first of all i'm an african a proud one uh, and uh, i'm from a family of eight i'm the sixth oh, wow. yeah big family <laughs> <laughs> wait when that's you say eight is it eight children <laughs> yeah eight children so you're so ten? ten yeah we're that that's big. my dream in another world in another <laughs> world <laughs> welcome <laughs> to my world because also you know i want a big family too yeah, yeah. wow so eight family of, what was that like growing up Great, because for me I'm the sixth born, yeah. so uh, there are always like a whole thread of people to look up to. Yeah, oh, wow. and w when you are in in kind of a difficult place, you have six or eight other people to yeah. call or to talk to. Is so, there like pressure? Uh, not really. I don't think it's. I think for the first born, it, there is pressure. Yeah. For me, I I just have to pick from experiences that other people have had yeah. and then learn the do's and the don'ts. Right. So it's kind of a bit easy for me. Did you find that you had to kind of fight your way through to be seen or did you oh, feel def that? Definitely okay. you have to do that because, uh, you know, I don't, because there are other people 
six other people who have already set a precedent. So for you to get there, definitely you need to fight your way through it. Yeah. It's been a tough journey. And I feel like I've just been recognized two, five, three years ago. So uh, it's like that by long. your family. Yeah. <laughs> For them to actually it's realize like, oh, you exist. Oh, oh, you oh, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's a tough journey. It's a tough journey. We've just discovered Desmond two, three years ago. Yeah. Like, your family must just be like, wow, 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 Desmond. Smart really? <laughs> I'm actually yeah. just curious yeah. what made them discover you. Uh, I think it's because. Um, I set my own rules and I go by them and not blaming anyone for your own misfortunes and owning them up. Wow. So when they see that you have uh, outgrown that stage of blaming your parents for blah, 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 I think kind of it liberates you from the bondage. Yeah, yeah you really know who you are. I know. So, yeah. Look at you. <laughs> so tell me, how have you been since we last been. spoke spontaneous? What's been happening? I have been, I have been good. Um, I have been good, I have been scared, I have been excited. I've just been having like a whole roller coaster of what life right. has to offer. Yeah. Mine. Yeah. And I know you've been working on something. <gasps> which is why yeah. we're here today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we've been working on this show. It's called the Gaining Grip Experience. We we've been literally gaining grip yeah. right here, right? Every like, single time, yeah. 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 How yeah. did you two meet? How did your paths cross? Wow. Who wants to go first? <laughs> go first. <laughs> You go first. Well, um, this story cannot be told without one glad you yeah. uh, She's a very interesting human. Oh, yeah, she's uh, the founder of Anika. Yes. Yes, so apparently Gladi had this whole idea and she reached out to us differently about having an organization that would have a space for people to talk about gender. It set out as gender-based violence, gender issues, um, rape, uh, and things like that, things that people feel quite heavy upon mental health and things like that. So when she shared it with me, uh, since I have sort of gone through sexual violence and things like that, I thought, yeah, I would totally love to be part of this initiative. At that time, we didn't even have a name. Yeah. We're trying to figure out which name to... Was it flowers, petals? Petals. <laughs> yeah, so we, I first met Des through the first meeting that Gladi had curated. Yeah. And we were, I remember we were me, Desmond, Gladys. I called Vanessa. in, yeah, Vanessa Mbura, and uh, that was Robin Nyakundi, yeah. and Kate. Yes. Kate, Kate, who's now handling the cake at affair. Yes. And Corin Kahi. Corin Kahi is a, um, She's just an, a dope, a dope, a dope artist. But anywho, the whole, the whole idea was to try and figure out how we were going to carry out these conversations and offer solutions. And we found ourselves as the drivers of Anika, yeah. an art-based initiative, changing the world art at a time. Art at a time? Yes. Okay, so tell me more about Anika. Anika what, yeah, so how, do you, how do you change the world one piece of art at a time? For us, basically, what, what I was just telling you, we have to talk, speak out more often. So we have a tagline, it's called Silence Kills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because most of the people are facing issues like mental health just because they never had people to confide in, you know. Mm -hmm. So for us, w what she was just saying, she has experience with uh, gender-based violence. Uh, I have issue, I have, I have like a experience with mental health and one of the biggest challenges we faced in our healing process was that we had no one to talk to or we had no safe spaces to just engage with other people who are facing the same issues. So we figured well, how about we create a safe space to talk about these issues that people are not able to talk about on, on the road or in a matatu or something like that. So that's why the idea of Anika started. And uh, we are artists, so <laughs> young people have this tendency of not having a long concentration span, yeah. you know? So when you have a discussion, for example, an open forum, and it goes for two hours, probably they just listen for the first 30 minutes and everyone will be on their phones. So if you, how do we engage people more? And uh, we are artists and people love art, yeah? So we, we just joined our art and brought the poetry and music into the into the conversations yeah so that's yeah that's how basically and we've been um 
We've done this a couple of times with various projects. Mm -hmm. uh, the first year we just spoke about gender issues, gender violence. The second year we moved to SDGs, SDGs. and then we picked it up to mental, mental health. health. And we've been silent for like barely a I year. Almost a year. Yeah. And we were super excited because in November, we actually, this November, right? Two weeks ago, courtesy of this guy, he's the operations guy, by the way. Yeah. We were able to do Y Talks yes. uh, with Global Peace Foundation. Yeah. Emerging yeah. Leaders yeah. Foundation yes. and Mental, Mental 360 at YWCA. Yeah. So, now, wow. yeah. so now it's been forums yes. and also themed events. Because at the end of the day, as he has said, we are all artists. Yeah. So we've been having various projects like there's the fatherhood issues where you get... It's a safe That's space it. for people to talk about issues that they never really got to talk about, about their fathers especially. Yeah. And fathers yeah. to engage with young people yeah. to yeah. give them just the perspective of what life is. So it's an open forum that people can it's come an and also speak? Or do you have people speaking to we, them? We do have the panel. So we have people speaking. Of course, we, we also have it, we have this in mind that if we, aside from just talking about it, what else? Yeah. Like if someone needs to go and get a counselor. So our, our whole idea is also to just bridge that gap and be a link towards a solution. So when the panelists come in, they're just specialists who are, are conversant with this conversation. Maisha ni kupanda na kushuka Chochote utakacho basi sema Sema wawa sema Dear me, first and foremost, I would like to put it out there that you are beautiful. I know the journey from baggy trousers to hipsters. Well, it's funny that how now I radiate in your twinkling buzz. Your package of truths unfold and your heart so fond are just amazing. So dear me, hold it to understand if at some point you actually wanted to be a boy. I mean, just to prove them all wrong. I wish I was a boy strong enough to be able to fight the bullies of my own siblings, but such heart. I just want to put it out there that chill scrapes I have grown so fond dear me dear me dear me. You are meant to be old at in steady delights and dark nights you motivate me dear me. Who wouldn't understand if at some point you actually just wanted to be loved by a charmer. But you know life sometimes can be such a bummer. A reporter said on TV. A man 19 hacks his old girlfriend 18. May 2019. A woman kills his husband over a thousand shilling note. August 2019. Guys, if you want to check more of this and listen to more of this, catch us during the Gaining Grip experience too. Because, yeah, thank you for listening. Spontaneous. Welcome back, everybody. So that piece you just saw uh, was by Spontaneous, and it's called Dear Me. Yeah. So what does it take? Where do, you, where do you go to get your, like, a piece like that? What, what does it physically take? Does, you know, do you to take me through the process? Yeah. The, specifically for this piece, it, it was in line by what uh, inspired the next Gaining Grip experience too. And the whole idea was to just talk about appreciating being woman, you know, like from when you're a young kid to now you're older, then what? to facing societal challenges, to facing your own doubts as a woman. And then now growing out of it and just saying, you know what, I, I deserve better, I, I am worth it. So having myself in that space and now just trying to patch it together with the experiences I have had. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just a lot of reflection, right? Yeah, yeah. wow. And do, do you have to physically take yourself to another space, like are you sitting by yourself? Are you in a restaurant as you're writing? Do you, 
are you on a laptop are you pen and paper i'm wondering what does it actually it, take? it, it depends uh that pieces i have written on a matatu just depends with yeah, what inspiration you can shared be. That. Yeah. yeah um but this specific piece was after i i was from work in coast and we were just training guys as pastry network on human rights and gender and i thought to myself i just got inspired to just talk about being woman and i remember i was i had my laptop and i was listening to some music and i just found myself writing a letter and being super honest about it because it's been a while since we were very honest in yeah. this pieces yeah. i just laid bare and about ga gaining grip is just about laying bare so, right yeah. yeah so tell me about your journey to poetry because i have spoken to spontaneous people so i know hers but yeah. how did you decide that this is really something that you wanted to pursue was that an easy decision for you personally it wasn't because i tended to be a very shy person growing up uh i'm the guy in the like in my home i'm the one who never talks oh really uh, yeah out of all eight <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you stand on a stage yeah you know out when, of the eight you're the shyest yes i am oh wow you are shy. even at home i rarely talk i'm always on either on my laptop in my room or doing something oh, wow. not around people really? yeah wow, wow. Okay. so for me it wasn't it wasn't easy because I've been condi I've conditioned myself to be alone. Uh, I've been alone for the longest time. So in high school, I think it started in high school when I just decided I woke up one day. I'm like, I want to join the music club. You know, okay. yeah, I went in, and when when we were doing the music, when it was uh, close to the music festival, I was given a choral verse to perform. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I did that, I I started I started getting used to the stage. You know. When I finished high school, go to university, I joined the University of Nairobi. Now that's when I joined the theater group and uh, that's when I actually actively started performing. We created a lot of platforms for young people to just come and perform at the university. There is the Literature Students Association, we have the poetry sport and stuff. So people could just come and, and talk about whatever they're going through. If you, have, you, are, you, you are stressed and you wrote something down, you just come and read it to us and we'll discuss it and uh, s p share different perspectives towards it. And that's, that's my journey with poetry. So uh, from there I got out after our campus. I started performing outside, that's in tw 2014. 2014-2015, yeah, I've been able to meet amazing, amazing artists like like her. Spontaneous. Yeah, yeah. so and they are like people who challenge you and encourage you every single day to do to do better. Right. Yeah. I feel like he's being so humble about this. <laughs> oh, so you want to share the real, <laughs> the real situation? Okay. I want to add his own, his, his horn, to to his Yeah. Journey. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he is the ops guy of Anika. You are a co-founder of an ad-based initiative that's amazing. Yeah. He, together with the team, of course, but we accolades to you, man. He organized. Um, do you want me to talk about that, or do you want to talk about I it alone? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> the random stories of Kauzi to Rwanda. Uh, ah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and he's also been with together with the team Kaliche. We we have one of us who's also in Rwanda called Kaliche. They've been able to also. They made East African tour happen. Talk yeah. about it. <laughs> so for the for the tours, mainly what we do is w the team. We developed a curriculum. It's called Design Thinking for Artists. So we train artists on creative writing, entrepreneurship, networking, marketing. Because most of us really, uh, as artists, we just know how to go on stage and do our thing. Mm. But then when it comes to talking about whatever we do, we never we don't know how to talk to corporates and stuff. Basically, selling yourself out or. Most of us are very introverted, so we never even get to talk to people past the event, you know. So we train them on all those wholesome aspects of being an artist. Uh, what my friend Robin calls capacity building for artists, yeah. <laughs> so we train them, uh, and then after training them, we curate events for them, where, for example, spontaneous, we have an event like Gaining Grip for, as a fundraising platform. And then when we get the money off the event, we are able to connect, to take her to a different country to just experience what art is like wow. in the other country. And there's yeah. nothing like submerging yourself in a completely different space, culture, language, yeah. fashion, yeah. 
everything to really open up your world because it starts to crack. It cracks something about something inside you just cracks wide open. Yes. And you yes. can never undo that. So I love that idea of like taking them to a different space. Yeah. So, ga the gaining grip experience. Yes. Two point <laughs> um, What is this one about? What is the theme? What's happening? What can people expect this Sunday? It's. <laughs> I like how you just looked at me. Yeah. yeah. Well, I would just like to make mention uh, the background. Gaining Grip Experience one was through, we, I had an album launch called Gaining Grip. And the whole idea was to just talk about me and just lay bare through other artists. So this year, this year was very interesting. I am a huge fan of a lady called Nomunda Sky and I follow her a lot. So I sort of DM'd her on Facebook <laughs> and I got her number. But that turns out that was the manager's number. And I told her how, oh, I like what you do. That's just been really amazing. And maybe one day we could do something together. You know how you just say one day and you don't think about one day is going to be this soon. So the manager probed. I like that he probed. He's called Fizz. And he probed and I kept quiet for two weeks. And I went back to my team. That's Robin and does one. Like, what do you do about this? They're like, you've started a conversation. They just have the conversation and let's see how it goes. And eventually they're like, yeah, would like to be part of, especially because it's on gender and development. It's, um, we are celebrating women. Mm. <laughs> this time around, we just, not to say we are not celebrating the men. I mean, the people behind this are men. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's just about celebrating women. Um, understanding, people talk about gender equality. But do they really talk about how when they were younger, they, for me, I wanted to be a boy when I was younger. Mm, why yeah. is that? I felt, I felt I was a weakling because th there's a way in which the society brands masculinity as strength and then if you're a woman, you're a weakling. So for a long time, I just wanted to be a man. And I remember even playing ho with hot charcoal, competing with other boys just to prove a point that what you can do, a woman can do better. Uh, so I wanted to share it from that point of view. I wanted people to understand that you start having gender struggles when you're very young. So when people say gender equality, it's from a very tender age. So maybe if they were able to delve deeper into that, then we can have that conversation of gender parity in a more mature and more, more reasonable manner. And Nomonde Sky is very big on women, individuality, and free thinking. So we thought, interesting, this is something we're both interested in, why not have it? And it's, I, I am just grateful that I have a team and Desmond here to just to keep on pressing me on towards this, you know? And an amazing cast um, that, that goes without saying, a seven and a 10 year old, yeah, you should come. What? Now you see. <laughs> There's a seven yeah. and a ten year old. There's a seven and yeah. a ten year old who are going to do their pe a piece. Yes, yes. they'll be singing and rapping. Oh, Ooh. you have to. Okay. So is it? Yeah. So as part of your lineup, you've got both men and women. Mm. Oh, so it's only it's no. women. It's, it's just women. and and that was pretty deliberate. We didn't want to sell out the show as a woman's, but we wanted the headlining to just speak for itself. Mm. So as much as we like the seven and the ten year old, the ten year old is taking center stage because she's the lady. She's called Esther, but she has her crew is the dad and the other younger sibling. What? Yeah. Oh, she's so cool. <laughs> and then. We, and we have, um, I am Socrates. Uh, I love her because of her flow tree. It's just on another level. And then we have Ivy, we have Nicole. Right. We have and I know Shiki. we're going to meet a couple of them. You yeah, guys need to some. meet yeah. a couple of them. They just... And the theme for each for each of these artists, they have to touch on... Everyone has... The interesting thing is it's a theatrical presentation. So like the kid talks about gender imbalance and, and questioning themselves. And then Tess talks about, now you're older, you're a teen, you love how you look like, but now you have a friend who died through femicide, so you fear relationships. Then uh, Ivy takes over with the whole idea of, you know what, I am more mature, I think I can handle relationships. But eventually, no, that's cool, but eventually they go through domestic violence. Yeah. 
and then now Ivy takes over by remembering when she was a kid and what she really wanted to do so that's now a solving sort of solving the issue and then I take over I'm like okay so you know what uh, it seems like relationships have been difficult so I'll just take over with my career and then now you swing back to now you're a full-time artist that's now no more this guy coming in and facing societal issues oh, that, that sounds good you've yeah. really just gone three six like you really i, I like love that it sounds true. amazing yeah so we, so where can people buy the tickets okay so how do people show up uh, what do we do also we have on my MOOC. okay yeah we have uh, you just you just can search for gaining grip and then you'll get how to buy the ticket yeah on my, uh, my MOOC.com. Yeah, we also have a call-in number, yeah. which is 707 okay. You can call in and we'll just reserve the ticket for you. All right. Uh, the Mpesa payment have number. Teller, yeah, the Mpesa till number, 800-320. Okay. Yeah. And this Sunday, Michael jo Master. Joseph Center, yes. 5 p.m. Yes. yes, 5 to 9 p.m. 5 to 9 p.m. this yes. Sunday. Yes. Sounds like it's going to be really good. You have Sounds no like idea. it's going to be really you good. You have no yeah. idea. <laughs> show up. Show up. That's basically what they're saying is show up. If you want to have an idea, yeah. don't miss this one. Yeah. Yeah. I've got two artists who will be performing at the, ga the Gaining Grip Experience this Sunday. I have got Socrates. I am Socrates, <laughs> um, and I've also got Nicole Agneta. Yeah. How are you both doing? We're good. So tell me a little bit about yourselves and how you got to discover that you actually love spoken word and poetry. And we can start with you, Nicole. Great. <laughs> um, I think for me it started off with reading books. Okay. And then I fancied myself a writer, and then I realized I was not. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Wait, so what makes you a writer, but n a poet, but not a writer? Um, oh. I, I don't think I could commit to oh, okay. what it actually takes to. Like, yeah, yeah, like a whole book. Yeah, <laughs> 300 um, pages in. Yeah, so I realized that my short stories would rhyme a lot. Oh. So I was like, oh, maybe that's, that's like a thing. Um, and how then old that's were how you I, at the time? I was in primary school, so... Oh, wow. Yeah, around that. Quite early. Yeah. And what books were you reading in primary school? Um, they were very random. Okay. A few, like, um, romance books. Okay. Which I don't know oh, why I had oh, access to. Oh, those ones to. that some were bad. <laughs> <laughs> but it would be like, ooh, did you see what happened on page 77? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So those are the ones I got exposed to first. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And what was your journey into poetry like, Socrates? I think for me, I was always writing, but more so for my feelings. So I would write, like, today I hated class. My teacher was such an... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then I, I was like around nine or 10. And then I like ran into my mom's like poetry that she wrote, but hers didn't rhyme. So then I was always like writing mine. Um, spoken word, I would perform like once in a while, um, but I wasn't really, really into spoken word. Um, but yeah, now I am. Wow. Yeah. So your mom <laughs> is, is also a, a poet. A yeah. poet. <laughs> Did you know quite early on that she was? No. Or? So I used just to like write upon. and then I like ran into like her poetry. Oh my goodness. So I think it's like in the genes. Yeah. <laughs> was art supported in your homes, in your family, in your, in, your, as, as a, in your childhood? Was it something that you found that your parents even like sort of pushed you into and just yeah. to excel in? Yeah, my mom was like a single parent. So I feel like she always felt the need to like support me and everything like 150%. So I didn't feel like I was missing anything. So she saw me dancing. She'd be like, oh my God, you're so amazing. You, you should do so you think you can dance. Yeah. She saw me like write a short story. She's like, oh my God, you should write a book. <laughs> yeah. So she just like supported me in everything. Um, even if I'd have been like, I want to do like, I don't know, just be a bum. She'd be yeah. like, okay. Yeah, yeah really good. Yeah. <laughs> and what was your journey like? Um, my mom is also very supportive and I've always been very experimentative. So um, I was very into sports and the writing stuff. Um, so I started competitions quite okay. early. Yeah. 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 And did you know quite early on that this is what you wanted to do? Um, yeah. I knew I wanted to commit to it yeah. to a level where it was something I could do continuously. Yeah. yeah. And was your expectations of it 
what you actually met when you started? Was it like, okay, okay, so. all right, this is yeah. what my I was thinking or was it, was it different? My first show was actually, honestly, magical. It really? Was, yeah. <laughs> I was like very, very nervous and I wasn't sure if I would even remember the pieces that I'd written. But then I went up on stage and then I started performing and then it just felt very like home. Right. Yeah. It felt like it felt natural. Yeah. Was your experience similar? Yeah, for me, I mean, poetry has never been like a job. It's always been a hobby. So actually what happened in school is someone would like run into my poetry and be like, oh, can you write something for us for the graduation? Can you write something for us? So then I would like do it. Um, but my first show also I had like good reception. Yeah. And I was kind of like, really? Yeah. You guys are interested in this? So do you still see it as a hobby or your... Yeah, career? for me, it's okay. a hobby. It's not a source of income for yeah. me, although I do, like, I have another job. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you, did you, was that easy for you to make peace with, um, that poetry wouldn't be your career? Did you at any point want for it to be your number one, your no, bread and butter? Yeah, no, because like I said, most of the poetry I write is actually, like, for myself. So actually the ones that I have to perform, I kind of go back and I take out some two personal things, and then I, like put more like general stuff in there because yeah. for me it's first a way of expression for myself and then the performing is just still a hobby I think yeah oh interesting yeah. so but why I mean I think I, I know why you're gonna say it but why take out bits that you think are too personal um, for me it began because again I didn't really want to perform it was just like a way of like fun um, stuff and then sometimes you know you put names in there and you don't oh, really want to know who yeah. they are <laughs> Um, and the more I perform, the more I'm realizing I can actually share, and that's actually become more therapeutic for me. So, like, I would never talk about, like, my dad not being around in my poetry, but now I put that in. Um, no, yeah, so it's just a way of, like, balancing what's personal and what's, like, therapeutic and also right. what's, like, entertaining. Yeah. yeah so. do, you f do you try struggle with that balance, or are you, I'm just going to bear it all and put in? Um... <laughs> I think uh, for me it's, a, it's like been progressive because at first I wouldn't put anything about um, like my personal life. Yeah. Um, but lately I've been delving more into projects that have themes. So for example, like for this show, there's certain stuff I have to put in where it's sort of revealing. Yeah. And then there is a project that we should be doing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's based on fatherhood. And my background with my dad is quite similar to hers. So there's, I think at some point it forces you to open up. Yeah. yeah. And I imagine for it to be, I mean, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I imagine for it to be masterful work. It, the, it, you have to source it from somewhere so deep within yeah. Yeah. that it can't not to be personal. Exactly. It has to be, it's like a, yeah. it's like a spiritual, um, yeah. you become now this conduit where it's just flowing through you. So it has to be personal. Yeah. But then how do you balance out so that you're not like, wow, wow, wow. Socrates told us that. <laughs> it's like really yeah. actually dying. Wow. But you know, that's the thing I actually like about spoken word is that maybe you'll get to like rehearse some lines that you're like, okay, I usually cry when I say this, but I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. But then when you perform it, it actually taps into that feeling again. And you're like, your voice cracks. Yeah. And funnily enough, the audience loves that. Like the, yeah. a lot of the general poems I do, they're like, yes, lines, yes, yeah. lines. But then I'm like, you know, when I was young, he didn't like me. And they're like... Yeah. I'm there with you. Yeah. Like, you know, like, exactly. Because we connect. <laughs> yeah. And I think we've done, I, I think social media, and we're probably digressing, but hey, let's. But I think the world we live in really glorifies this, these perfect stills and perfect yeah. moments and makeup, snap, well, no, slayed, yeah. hair, snap. Everything has to be so perfect that when you show any moment of realness yeah. which a lot of times shows like pain or some kind of weakness or that they look at that and they see strength you know and they're like ah i want more of that yeah. give me more of that yeah. what has been the turning point for you in your poetry career is there a moment where you thought wow this is this is it this is this is what makes me feel like i should be here i should continue i think um when I can write something that I'm personally proud of. So regardless of whether I go on stage and then, cause you know, there's certain lines you write and you're like, the crowd is gonna snap yeah. so hard. <laughs> and then you, yeah, and then you say it and then it's like silence. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then the ones that you weren't really um, expecting a major response yeah. from is the one people are like, oh my God, when you say that line, yeah. I felt that. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think for me, um, adding that personal touch to it. And then if, 
because every now and then there'll be I'll do a show and then afterwards someone will come up to me and like I really really liked that piece mm. um, and it feels nice okay. to so like those have the that you hold on to as like ah oh, this is where I'm supposed to be yeah if I enjoyed it and then a few people in the crowd enjoyed it as well then yeah yeah it's a good time is it the same for you like the connection with the audience yeah exactly and I find the more personal things that I do the more that the audience is more connected and for me actually it's like one significant moment I had done slam poetry slam Africa and like I think the first uh, month I won and then like the last one at the end of the year where you were going to be like slam queen or yeah, slam yeah, king yeah. I had done some more fun pieces and then I decided for my last one I really want to do something that's super personal to me and the whole time I'm like breaking down crying as I'm doing it and then I actually didn't win um, and then the audience at the end came and said it's crazy because that's the poem that we like the most out of everything and then also in that moment I realized I don't want to perform a personal piece and be scored for it you know? ah. I don't want to do something that makes me super emotional and they go 70% 80% yeah. and so I think for me that was like don't confuse the creativity yeah. for like feedback so I actually don't for me like the when I feel good about it that's enough and then if someone else likes it I'm like <laughs> oh wow yeah. that's such a like a an, inter an interesting moment to be able to recognize that there is that there is beauty in creating and, and putting it out there yeah. but that it doesn't need to be you don't need it to be validated in a certain way for it yeah. to be beauty good. and yeah. art and good exactly exactly what are the parts about poetry that are a little challenging, aren't so pretty, that make you feel like, hmm, is there something about this that you find a little challenging? I think for me it's writer's block. Oh yeah? Yeah. So what do you do when you have writer's block? <laughs> um, I haven't found like the perfect um, solution to it. Uh, so sometimes I'll try, I find that sometimes if I'm trying to write about something and I'm having a difficult time, it's either because I'm not being honest with myself enough or maybe I just don't have a story to tell within that scope. Yeah. And I think sometimes it's fine because I, yes. yeah, there's, I think there was a time I went for a show and um, I think as an artist sometimes you also want to tell important stories and there are certain labels as to what important is. So if you're not talking about gender inequality, if you're not talking about poverty, if you're not talking about politics and you talk about more chill relatable stuff then maybe you're not doing important work but at the same time if you're trying to tell someone else's story and you don't do it justice it comes off so ingenuine and the crowd doesn't connect you know you're not connecting either so yeah <laughs> wow oh good that's good i the, the part about writer's block and having to move past that by just being more honest with yourself i think it's so it's so beautiful are there any are there any hard moments for you socrates about poetry in this industry i think the writing no but the industry yes so like more so like the poetry scene is kind of dominated by a lot of men they're usually the ones organizing the events they're usually the ones like you know like just dominating the space and so sometimes you find if they're organizing an event, you're the only woman, everyone is talking about different things. Um, also just how they kind of treat you and the whole process of it is not really fair. And I think um, for me it was challenging because men are pretty aggressive when it comes to uh, their art or just anything like ambitious. And for me poetry has always just been like a chill thing. I'm not in it to be like, you know, like beating people out of the mm. space. Although I do though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I think when I first started, I was a bit like, okay, let's see what the space is like. And a lot of them thought like, you're like not, you're not like, you're waiting for people to do things for you, to organize shows for you. And I'm just like, I'm going to do it in my own time. Right. Yeah. So I think that's the challenging part. The fact that it's kind of dominated by. Yeah. I mean, we, ha we, j we just had Spontaneous on the show. And the last time she was on the show, there was a lot of talk around that, the industry being dominated by men and, and how to sort of overcome that as a woman. Um, and it got quite interesting, I thought. I, I almost wish we could do, no, we should. We should do another show and we talk about that, yeah. especially in, this, in, in the arts industry. Um, but now, now that we've come to the end of the show, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask that you please perform a piece each to bid us farewell. Make sure that our Thursday is 
good, because I did start the show off by saying poetry is going to make us feel something and hopefully feel good. Um, so I'd love to hear some of your pieces as we say goodbye. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. And thank you to Park In by Radisson. Make sure to buy your tickets um, if you haven't already. Sunday, 5 p.m., buy your tickets. Um, and now we're going to have a piece from the two ladies, one each, yeah. right? All right, take us away. Queens, we have a surplus of them. So we've decided to categorize and term them further. Locally, we have the slay queens, just don't be queer, Rafiki. You can love another queen as long as it's for the pleasure of the king. You're a queen as long as you have that haven between your thighs, a long gleam in your eyes, as long as you sit right, do your hair nice, don't be wild, are you educated? Do you have a death job, are you married? No, actually, you're stronger if you don't want him. No, actually, you single ones are the troublemakers, the homewreckers sit quietly. Actually, if you want to get married, you're just conforming to patriarchal rules and taking us back by centuries to so tell me. What exactly do you want from me? Don't act so indiscriminately to what society has been teaching you. We're a civilized society. That haven we're talking about, it's been colonized. Act like it. But then again, don't. We're future forward, aren't we? It's funny, isn't it? How we teach young girls to love themselves. How we tell them to simply be themselves, but then build them a box and tell them, be yourselves in here. They tell you, you're a real life Wonder Woman. Then marvel at you when you follow through, act whimsical. Put on a tight suit and go out and do the things that you want to do. Gawk at you when you, don't want to, when you don't want the suit. When you want to paint, to sing, or write poetry. Perform it before them, but your soul to them. Then they snap the fingers, smile at you, and they turn and ask, um, so what is it that you really do? Who are you? No. Who do they allow you to be? See, it's easy to play the victim when you create the crime scene that's society for you. Listen here, young man. I don't know what your intentions are, but you're not going to get far with a girl like me. A girl like me with piercing eyes, coy smile, and legs that go for miles and miles and miles. They call me gazelle. African bombshell. Insecure women use pork fat to cover the skin of their men because only witchcraft could explain how to my whim their sons and husbands bend, but can you blame them? You guys saw how I walked, how my body swayed with every step to the rhythm of the clock. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Boy, I have somewhere to be, and I don't know what your intentions are, but you're not going to get far with a girl like me. A girl like me with a footprint so big she walks into a room and changes the climate. Who needs a helicopter view of the skyline when you have this brilliant fusion of God and woman as a horizon and yet ain't it human to see beauty and not find it enough to just observe it? And ain't it like a man to have to touch it and possess it because ain't it just a woman placed here for his pleasure and consumption and if I deny him? Ain't it just a woman who defies his interpretation of what God meant when he spoke of submission but you think you can save me? So you quote me the Old and the New Testament as if my mama didn't read me the Book of Kings and teach me about the queen that was Sheba. She ever so skeptically marched up to the throne that was Solomon and interrogated his knowledge. She, a woman, made up king, bend down to her knees, and he, a man just like you, spent the rest of his life writing poems about her and titled them Wisdom, because that was the only way he could put her behind a glass cage and pin her to a wall in his kitchen so young man take a picture. It'll last longer. And if you want to see the rest, come to the show. <laughs> take a picture. Oh, I love that piece. Yeah. <laughs>